Hello everyone, my name is Dan and welcome to episode one for Medic Junkies. Today we're going to talk about some new protocols coming out of Central Arizona Regional EMS Guidelines 2020. We're going to talk about shock with the adults and pediatrics. Specifically, we're going to dive into the new push dose pressors that we're allowed to administer. So bringing up the protocol here, again this is the shock adult and pediatric. The first thing that we're going to notice is that the uh, bolus for fluid administration has increased. We're used to giving 20 cc per kilo boluses, but now they've increased that to 30 cc per kilo uh, per dose to a max of one liter. Okay, And we can repeat this up to three times. Each bolus should go in within 15 minutes though, or less. Uh, keep in mind, depending on the size of catheter you have, the tubing, and the IV placement, you may need to add a little pressure behind this infusion. So I would recommend grabbing a pressure infuser, putting it on your IV bag and pumping it up. Now the goal is not to pump it up as high as you can or even to the max, um, but rather I would pump it up as you're watching the drip, cha drip chamber and have a nice steady flow going through this. When you have that steady flow, we know we're infusing quickly, let it run. And periodically you'll have to increase the pressure as we deliver more fluid. Now looking at the pediatric side, it's the same dose, 30 cc's per kilo, up to a max of one liter per bolus, less than 15 minutes. Um, and we can repeat this up to three times. Now on the pediatric side, you'll notice that it says use a push-pull method. Uh, this basically just involves a syringe within your tubing and you're drawing fluid from the bag and pushing it uh, a little quicker through that IV line. Uh, I'll make another video of that shortly. Now getting into the push dose pressors, <clears throat> we're going to be using epinephrine for this. Now let's say you have that patient who is unstable, they're shocky, they're hypotensive, um, and they're non-responsive to our fluids. Okay? Um, we need to start looking at what their blood pressure is and more importantly what their MAP is. Here it says we want to maintain a MAP of greater or equal to 65. Okay? Um, if their pressure is lower than that and they're not responsive to fluid, or they do tend to be fluid overloaded and you can't give them any more fluid because they're developing those crackles, we're gonna jump to this push dose presser. Now the dose for the adult is gonna be 10 to 20 micrograms. We can give this in increments of one to two milliliters once we mix it up and I'll show you in a second. Uh, for the pediatrics, we're allowed to give one to 10 microgram boluses or 0.1 to one milliliters every two minutes. Now again, reassess your patients, reassess the blood pressure, their overall impression, their perfusion status, um, and again, we can keep giving these doses every couple of minutes. Now let's talk about a couple side notes here, one being the MAP, all right? So a normal MAP, first of all, a MAP is not a physically measured number. It's a calculated number based off of your non-invasive blood pressure, okay? So if you're getting a um, automated blood pressure, a lot of times you'll see something like 120 over 80, and then you have this number in parentheses, okay? Uh, when we do the math, we'll see that it's actually 93 for this one. So that number in the parentheses represents, again, a calculation based off systolic and diastolic. Now, when we look at a normal map, we want a map to be somewhere between that 80 to 100 range. That's usually considered normal. Depending on what literature you're looking at, sometimes they might say 70 to 100, but I like to lean with this, 80 to 100, okay? If somebody's MAP drops less than 60, they are not going to perfuse adequately, especially to vital organs like their kidneys, their heart, and their brain. We all know the brain is the first organ to suffer when it becomes hypoxic. If we are hypoxic for more than four to six minutes, we're gonna start killing off those brain cells. So when we have people with very low MAPs and blood pressures, we've gotta be pretty aggressive with getting that pressure back up to maintain adequate perfusion, okay? Now again, per the protocol, they want us to maintain a MAP of at least 65, so we're not even really any close to that number, okay? Keep it above that. Now, how do we calculate the MAP? Simple math. Think one, two, three, okay? And then think about your blood pressure and how we normally read it. The first number you say would be systolic, okay? And then we're gonna add this to the second number we always say, which is our diastolic. So our formula is one times the systolic plus two times the diastolic, divide all that by three, okay? So if we take that perfect blood pressure, 120 over 80, and we plug it in, let's see what we get. 
So 1 times the systolic is 120, plus 2 times the diastolic is going to be 160. And we're going to divide that by 3. This is going to equal 280 divided by 3, which roughly is going to equal 93 and some change. But 93, that would be adequate. Okay. Now let's just take kind of a random blood pressure here, maybe 90 over 40. Okay. Now at first glance, we're going to see that that pressure is 90. And usually for adults, that's our minimum. And we think, okay, that's adequate enough. It's not very good, but at least it's 90, right? Um, well, let's figure out what a map might be. So we take 1 times the systolic plus 2 times the diastolic, divide all that by 3. Now this is going to equal 170 divided by 3, which approximately will come out to 56.6. Let's just round that up to 57, okay? 57 is way below 65, which is our minimum for the protocol, right? But on first glance, 90, we said, 90 systolic usually isn't super, super unstable, right? We consider that to be stable. However, our map tells us otherwise, right? So if I had a patient with a map like this and they're looking like they're having those signs of poor perfusion, we need to start being pretty aggressive. Large bore IV, get the fluids running. Remember, 30 cc's per kilo up to a max of one liter per bolus. Uh, and we can give them three times, okay? And you're probably gonna want that pressure bag on it to get that fluid running quicker. Uh, again, keep in mind that we wanna listen to lung sounds, make sure they're not overloaded with fluid, with crackles developing. Um, but assuming their lungs are dry, give them the fluid. Now, if I saw a pressure like that, 57 MAP, I'm probably going to start thinking about push dose presser right away, which means I'm going to grab my equipment, I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to get ready to draw it up. Okay? If they are unresponsive to our fluid, maybe reassess in a couple minutes, if they're unresponsive to it, or they're not responding quickly, we're going to go ahead and draw up our epi. Okay? Now, looking back at our dose, it's going to be 10 to 20 micrograms, or 1 to 2 cc's. A quick way to mix this is we're going to go ahead and we get our equipment here, okay? I have a 10 cc normal saline flush. I have a needle, bigger the better, this is a 19 gauge. I have my three-way stopcock and I have my code epi, my 1 to 10,000 concentration, okay? So you can do this one of either way, whether you want to draw it with a needle or use a three-way stopcock, up to you, I'll show you both. So let's go ahead and pull our epi. So I always open the wrong side. If you want to style points, screw it in. Okay, I'm going to open up my flush, open up my stopcock, use my needle in a second. Okay, with my stopcock, I'm going to go ahead and take off these connections. Now, with my 10cc normal saline flush, what I want you guys to remember is waste one, pull one, give one in regards to cc's, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna waste one cc of saline, okay? I can screw this into one side of my stopcock. I'm gonna grab my code epi. I'm gonna screw this in, okay? Now, if we're looking at our three-way stopcock, we have this off indicator. Whatever direction this is pointing, that is off to that port, okay? So I want to keep it off to the air, and I want to draw my epi into my flush. So a good way to do that is to add a little bit of pressure behind your epi as you draw from your saline, okay? And I just want to draw one cc, okay? And then kind of mix it up, agitate it a little bit, and now, I basically have 10 cc's of my syringe filled with 100 micrograms of epi now. So if we reduce that, that gives us 10 micrograms per one cc, okay? And per our protocol, we can give one to two cc's, depending on how severe your patient is. Now with the pediatric patients, we are allowed to give 0.1 to one, okay? We don't wanna give more to the kids than we would to the adults, so max of one cc for kids. Pretty simple on that one. Now, if you don't want to use the stopcock, we can use the needle to draw. So I would basically pretend this is a new 10cc flush, get my needle, 
I can waste a CC. And if I were to just pull this epi out of the package, I could draw out of this just like any other vial. I don't have to put air into it, but I can stab in there. I can draw one CC. Again, agitate, and now boom, I'm back to my 10 cc's filled with 100 micrograms of epi, okay? So essentially, I can give one to two cc's or 10 to 20 micrograms. That would be adequate. Now, quickly coming back to the pediatrics. Now with adults, we wanna stay over that map of 65. And obviously every couple minutes, keep reassessing and possibly give more epi if you need it. But for pediatrics, we wanna maintain an adequate blood pressure per that age, okay? So remember, a minimum systolic blood pressure for kids should be 70 plus two times the age. So for example, if I have a two-year-old, plug a two in there, two times two is four, 70 plus four equals 74. That is the minimum that the blood pressure should be on the systolic side. Um, so if they're less than that, continue the fluids, continue the epi push dose pressors, and with that, that's it. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.